Hey guys, my name is Chris White, Team Vandal. I'm out here in blistering hot South Florida, and this is my 1995 240SX. So since we're on the outside, I'll just start with the outside. So the arrow is Origin Lab Stylish Line Arrow, and that's the front bumper, side skirts, and rear bumper. The rear over fenders are charge speed plus 50 mil over fenders. I got these from the previous owner. I didn't get them from the previous owner. They were already on the car when I bought the car. I just basically trimmed them up and kept them on the car. The front fenders are Modelo Drive FRP front fenders. They're also plus 50. These are basically an eBay generic brand. They fit pretty well for it not being a name brand and they look pretty good, but they are really, really wide. Uh, the wheels are Enki RPF ones. The fronts are 17 by nine and a half. The rears are 18 by nine and a half. Offset in the rear is plus 18, offset in the front is plus 15. Now, tire-wise, in the front I got ATR Sport 2s. Drifting this car was a little hard at first. These are 245-40s in the front, so it's a very meaty tire. Um, the tread wear on these is 400, and I run them at 35 PSI, so it's pretty decent. That helps with lessening the front grip. Uh, the rears are some cheap, I don't know, some tires that were on when I traded my 10 and a halfs for nine and a halfs. Uh, they're Firestone, Firehawk, Indy 500s very weird tire brand to run these are 340 tread wear and i run these at 45 psi and they're 245 40 so it's very weird setup uh the tires need to be changed for the track um in the future i'll most likely run kendas or atr sport twos in the rear and i'll play with the pressure but i want to be able to have 35 as a baseline square around the whole car and then work from there these are circuit sport clear their lenses are not new headlights so i basically take out the old lens from the oem headlight and put these in. I do have Circuit Sport clear corners, but because of these Modelo drive fenders, the fitment is not the best, so I can't get them on. Uh, I do have to weld up a bracket in order to run those, but hopefully in the future I'll have those on, just so the car can look a little more complete. On the top, this is an LRB Speed sunroof delete panel, so with my helmet, I didn't fit with the OEM sunroof, and also the OEM sunroof is really heavy and it was leaking, so I did the delete panel. I need to paint it, it's an eyesore. I got used to it because it's my car, but that needs to get painted in the future. It came with a white stock SE trunk and it didn't latch, so I just swapped it out for a black trunk. Um, Jesse Streeter vibes. That's about it for the exterior. So I guess we'll move on to the inside of the car, which is my favorite part of the entire build. Uh, the inside is amazing. I love the inside, so let's talk about it. All right, so the interior is my favorite part of the car overall. It's very clean, I'm very proud of it. Basically everything is custom done. So this car was completely stripped down and all the OEM wiring was removed. It has all custom wiring, so all the harnesses were made in-house as well as a custom fusing relay panel, which you guys are seeing right now on the screen, all made in-house by me. Everything was basically wired up from scratch, except for the engine harness. So this is a Bride Zeta 3 gradation seat, and I got this from used racing parts online. I love this seat so much. It's got the, I forget if this is called diamond or whatever this is called. I just call it diamond. People call it diamond, but it's got the diamond back and I love that so much because it glitters. It's basically like diamond, if you can see. I got a Keys 330 millimeter suede racing wheel. This was imported by Jesse Streeter. It's got an energy quick release with an eBay generic cup spacer. I think it's about two and a half inches. Glow shift tack, AEM gauges. We have air fuel ratio, oil pressure, and water temp. This is a custom dual control fan panel, so it controls both of my electric fans separately. This is just something I fab, not fabbed up because I didn't, I didn't fab anything, but I just took some sheet metal, uh, double sided it, put it on here, and this is hardwired. No relay for the fans. It's just an inline fuse, so two inline fuses going to heavy duty switches and that goes straight to the E-fans. The floor mats are Phase 2 Motor Trend or P2M mats. Everybody always asks me about the floor mats, so if you want to get these, they're Phase 2 Motor Trend. I bought these on EnjukaRacing.com. Uh, you can see them on both sides. They're really neat. I like how it fits in with the whole color scheme. This is an ABS sheet, and I actually have a video of me custom making this to fit with the switch panel. If you guys want to see that, um, I'll just link it in the description. There's going to be a ton of videos in the description. If you want to just see the whole build overall, it's all documented on my channel. So if you guys are interested in seeing this thing built from the bottom up, everything's on the channel. Um, Pro Comp Autometer Boost Gauge and Equus Fuel Gauge in the back because this cluster right here is just for show. I have written in Japanese display only. Uh, that's not wired up. That's about it for the interior. Basic Tomei shift knob, quick release fire extinguisher. Got a stretch tucked in banner right here. Oh, and also 
a nice little LED rechargeable dome light that's magnetic, so that just sticks on there. That's really it for the interior. Um, the previous owner filled the rocker panels with hardening foam, I guess, to make the car more rigid. Uh, I've never really seen that, but hey, it's whatever. That's that's uh, that's cool. Battery relocation, Opto red top battery and a trailer gear battery box relocated to the opposite side of the driver and the trunk uh, for proper balance of weight, I guess. Not gonna lie, for suspension, you guys can call me in the comments all you want. Don't call me too hard, but Megan Racing coilovers came with the car when I bought it. And right now I have Megan fronts and BC rears. Now, Megan and BC do share the same spring, so I just figured it would be good to go half. I needed more height drop in the rear, and the Megans were maxed out. Didn't want to go full BC because I didn't have the money, so I just stuck with the half kit, and I still need to change it to a full kit. But that's the setup right now. Don't call me too much, but we're going to talk about the whole suspension setup of the car. AK front, 6K rears. In the back, I have ISR Pro rear upper control arms, which are basically camber arms, ISR Pro traction arms, and part shot max toe arms in the rear. It's got a welded diff, and the previous owner did do polyurethane subframe bushings. I don't know the diff ratio. Whatever came with the car is what's welded in there. I don't know if it's swapped out. I don't know if it's a 350 diff. I don't know, but whatever's in the car, the diff in there, I welded it and put it back in. It works good. In the front, I have actually z32 calipers and a z32 like bracket adapter that previous owner did that as well uh tain front tension rods and isr tie rod ends in the front that's about it it's got stock angle uh no steering modifications in the front in the back i'm actually running d1 spec pads from project mu and they are amazing so i do run the stock handbrake i don't have anything crazy like a hydro or a dual caliper setup in the rear just a stock handbrake, uh, ISR drift button, and the D1 spec pads. It works amazing. If you don't want to buy a hydro or you don't have a comp car, if you have a street car grassroots like this, I recommend going that route. So dampening wise, I did have a lot of rubbing issues just because the body kit wasn't shaved up too well. And um, I don't have a fully sealed rear end because the rear end is cut for the overs. Um, I'm about 75% max hard dampening, front and rear if I can recall and it works pretty good. It's kind of a stiff ride. In the future, I will be going with a softer setup, especially once the car is making more power, but right now with the way it is stock, it's a decent setup to begin with. That's it for suspension. Let's talk about the motor. So the engine is an S13 Blacktop SR20 DT. This was freshly rebuilt in-house by me. If you guys wanna watch the whole documentary on that, I'll have it in the description as normal. Starting off, it's got a Silk Road manifold imported by Jesse Streeter. That's the coolest thing on the engine by far. It's amazing, it's authentic, and I love it. The whole exhaust is ISR. ISR turbo elbow, ISR downpipe, ISR test pipe, ISR catback, non-res to ISR four inch dual blast pipes. I love ISR, but it's a little deep, so I might be changing that up in the future. Turbo is a stock T25 gear turbo on seven pounds. The intercooler is a part shop max high mount intercooler. So I get a little bit more response out of it. It's got an ISR intake with aluminum piping. Core rad radiator, Altima 1995 dual electric fans, GK Tech upgraded clutch fan, GK Tech eccentric throttle wheel. I got a couple chase base things in the engine bay. Chase base water overflow, chase base grounding kit, chase base power steering hard lines, chase base clutch line. Uh, the master cylinder for the clutch was upgraded as well as the slave cylinder. Uh, clutch wise, it's a comp ultra lightweight flywheel and a comp stage four unsprung clutch. Very heavy pedal, but I got used to it over time. Harness wise, this is a wiring specialties pro harness. I love it, it's amazing. Lower harness is custom made in house by me. Uh, that includes the headlights, fans, alternator wiring, starter wiring, all that stuff. All new fuel lines, 300ZX OEM stock fuel filter. Upgraded injector cap hardware. The, um, all new lines, not AN lines, but all new fuel lines. Uh, the tank is actually brand new because the old one cracked. It's running a D. Schwartz 255 liter per hour pump. Upgraded ISR AN turbo lines. This is an S14 notch top upper water neck. You guys can see the inlet there for the AN turbo lines. That's a very cool upgrade because the stock turbo lines on this are very weird. It's like a soft line to a hard line. It's behind the motor. There's not enough space. It's, it's, it's a pain. That's a very good upgrade. Um, generic rad hoses, Mishimoto water temp adapter. That's it for the motor. I mean, it's very simple. Like I said, in the future, I'll be upgrading a couple things, but for now, this works wonders. It's an amazing stock entry-level grassroots drift car, and I love it. This entire car, start from finish, the entire build's on the channel. Check the description. You guys can see each part of the car, all the different installs, the seat, 
the harness that I used to have, the full engine rebuild, the wiring, all that stuff, it's all in the description. So make sure you guys check that out. Subscribe if you guys wanna see this car on the track because we're actually aiming for a track day very soon. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace and thanks for watching.